Before I start, according to YouTube statistics, 100% of my YouTube statistics are a form of YouTube statistics. So if you like the video, please subscribe to become part of the 100% of YouTube statistics, YouTube statistic. If you haven't already, I have a down stacking introduction video, which I made a while back that explains stacking on top of garbage and avoiding the peak of your stack to go over garbage layers and stuff like that. Down stacking cheese follow similar guidelines to regular stacking. Keep the stack low, not high. Keep the stack flat, not spiky. This part is particularly important because spiky stacks are what cause the stack height to go high. So here are my tips for practicing cheese. There are a lot of cheese race gods that find the most perfect, most elegant down stack, but you can actually get surprisingly far by just stacking flat. Seriously, just, just stack flat. Whenever you clear a line, make sure the stack is flat. Don't clear a line of cheese if it makes everything all willy wonky and stuff. If you know how to stack flat in 40 lines, it's actually no different when you're clearing lines of garbage. So prioritize a flat stack over clearing the cheese or the Tetris as you would. So if this as an example, I could clear this line of cheese like this, but after I do that, it's going to be spiky on those right three columns and it's also going to be spiky just in the general center. So instead I'm going to use a different piece to clear that line of cheese and use the T to flatten my stack instead. Then I'm going to clear the Tetris knowing that it keeps my board clean after I clear the eyepiece. A good exercise for this is setting your cheese layer to 3 and then your messiness to 100 and this will force you to always try to find flat solutions because you have no idea what's going underneath. This means that any solutions you make that are extremely spiky will be severely punished. As it seems with everything in Tetris, the most annoying pieces to deal with are going to be those S and Z pieces. When clearing cheese, be careful with these buggers because using this on cheese will actually spikeify the stack if you're not careful. The first solution here works, it doesn't stack over any garbage holes, which is good, but there is a better solution here if we thought about reducing the amount of spiky residue. So the J and the L piece do this pretty well. In this example, this J piece solution has a cleaner residue. Another piece to be wary of is the eyepiece. Laying it flat is usually a pretty safe bet, but placing it vertically may add four layers that you have to get rid of in order to get to the cheese hole. Be really careful with this one and make sure you avoid placing it vertically over cheese layers that are close to you. I'm gonna be placing the eyepieces over these lines of garbage. And in this case, it's not that bad because these lines are so far away that by the time I get to it, I've probably already cleared the four lines of my stack that I need to clear in order to get to the garbage. Next tip I'm going to give you is to just play more. I hate this advice with a passion, I'm not going to lie. There is no way I can make a common down stacking patterns video to cover most of them. I feel like there are hundreds that top players just know from sheer brute force hours and hours of practicing cheese. Best to just know how to read residue when you clear lines, know how to look ahead and just go for least blocks on cheese race. Good luck with that. I know I hated it when I was practicing down stacking, so I'm happy other people can feel my pain too. Have fun. Finally, I just want to say that your ability in cheese race fluctuates a lot on good and bad days. In my experience, more so than versus ability or sprinting ultra. Something that's always helped me is watching good cheese runs before I start practicing cheese. I don't know what it is through osmosis or Jesus Christ himself, but it's actually helped a lot. Enough for me to mention it. 